Okay, so I got a Godzilla toy here, but it feels like something's missing. About a year ago, I discovered an eBay shop called iPop Designs. They're located in Colorado here in the States, and they offer all sorts of 3D printed buildings that scale great with kaiju toys. Monster arts, NECA, even the soft vinyls look spectacular with these buildings. iPop Designs offers standard buildings as well as damaged ones. Some of their models even have some easy lighting. If you followed my toy photography on Instagram, then you know already what iPop Designs buildings can do. And now some of Instagram's biggest kaiju toy photographers are also using iPop Designs. The craziest thing about it all is how affordable these are. And that's good because once you get one building, you're gonna want more. I've become friends with the fella in charge and he really likes to support Monster Island buddies. In fact, there's a whole heck of a lot of buildings from iPop Designs toward the end of Destroy All Godzillas. This looks like a real city! But you don't even need this many because just one building next to a Godzilla toy on your display will create a sense of massive scale that's missing when your Godzilla is alone. So go for it! Just follow this link to the iPop Design eBay shop. Be sure to follow it as inventory is replenished on a pretty regular basis and new models are coming up all the time. Like I said, iPop Designs has become a big supporter of Monster Island Buddies, and I'd like to support them in return. If you're looking for some great buildings for your display, then I highly recommend you check out iPop Designs. Playtime! Yay! If you've ever gone window shopping for vintage Godzilla merch, you might have seen this in your travels. Magic rocks! Rocks grow underwater in minutes! This was in American stores in 1995, and it was put out by Craft House. And it gives you a chance to make a pretty cool Godzilla display while also learning science! There's a little bit of artistry involved here too, as they give you an uncolored Godzilla that you can paint with provided paint colors, along with the magic rocks and the container to grow them all in. If you've stumbled upon this today, you might have the same question I had. Does it still work? Today on Playtime, we're gonna find out! But first, can we just acknowledge this really gummy-looking Godzilla right here with his two rows of teeth? He looks like he got hit with the Joker's laughing gas. So step one is painting. And by the way, how American is it that they want the base color to be dark green? Now this is absolutely true. My box has never been opened before. And look at the paintbrush. Do paintbrush bristles evaporate over decades? I'll have to go find my own brush now. Or maybe not. Yeah, the paint hasn't aged very well here, as you can see. And to be honest, it would be pretty unreasonable to think that the paint has kept for decades. This paint has straight up turned into pure rubber. But whatever, we're not here to paint, we're here to grow crystals. So we're gonna skip to step two, the aquarium assembly. You start by putting this tin foil like floor in the container. Next, you place Godzilla inside along with the magic rocks that kind of look like oversized fruity pebbles. The instructions encourage you to spread the rocks around. And by the way, I think I forgot to say this before, but the Godzilla sculpture here is pretty okay. It's more detailed than it needed to be. I can see why the box had a do not consume warning. These kind of look delicious. Now, in order for the magic rocks to grow, you have to apply the magic solution, which straight up looks like a cocaine brick. It's hard like a brick too. This, uh, this also did not age very well. Next, I will pour the magic solution into this hipstery mason jar. Then we're gonna pour the magic solution into two cups of water. Feels like I'm baking cookies now. I wish I was baking cookies now. Give that a good stir, and to me, the solution did dissolve pretty well. Now we just pour this milky substance into the bowl with the fruity pebbles. God, I'm hungry. I wanna make sure I get all of it in there. The oh, oh, gross. <laughs> now, just as a friendly reminder, the box says right here that the rocks will grow in minutes. Well, I got minutes to spare. Let's see what happens. First, I just want to make sure I did this right. Uh, discoloration here, and this will grow. Let this rock group grow for at least six hours? What? I guess when the box says it grows in minutes, they meant 360 minutes. And sure enough, we are a half a day later, and um, this has not changed. Let's pour it out anyway. Maybe there's a crystal hiding somewhere in here. And we are in luck, if by magic rocks we mean clumps of gross multicolored bleh. If you've ever seen this and thought about buying it, just know there's a good chance it won't actually work anymore. 
but gosh darn it, I promised you crystals in this video, so we're gonna make some crystals. So I went and got this National Geographic Crystal Growing Lab. It's new. It also comes with a snazzy display base. Take that Godzilla crystal magic rock thing. Wow, the instructions to this one are a full-blown textbook. I don't want to learn how to make crystals, I just want to make crystals! Now for this science experiment, I'm going to use this old Trendmaster Space Godzilla toy I have that's in pretty bad shape already. But if there's one kaiju that should grow some crystals around him, it's probably Space Godzilla. Problem is, he does not quite fit in the container that the National Geographic box provided. To solve for this, we will use the container that came with the other set. I've cleaned it out and fed the lumps to my dog. Instead of rocks, this one has different colored powders. We'll grow blue crystals around our Space Godzilla here. Now this one has us boiling water, so already we're getting a little more high-tech than the last kit. And hot dog, our boiling water is ready. We're gonna pour it right on top of the greens here. Fogging up the sides. Hopefully Space Godzilla doesn't melt. And look at that, the water is turning a deep Easter egg blue. The instructions want you to stir this for a good couple of minutes, so I'm gonna follow it to the T because I really wanna grow some crystals. And last, we must apply the Orb of Narinatha, which summons the power of the five moons to create matter where there was not matter before. Now, unlike the first kit, this kit wants you to wait a full seven days to check on the crystals. Now, while I'm trying to grow blue crystals on Space Godzilla, I've also got a cup with purple crystals. That'll be our control group in this little experiment. Well, it's been seven days, and look at this beautiful purple crystal formation from my control group. This was using the cup that was provided with the kit. This looks picture perfect! I gotta say, this was... This is really cool. But how did Space Godzilla turn out? What the hell happened? Apparently, crystals grew on Space Godzilla, but not within the water like they were supposed to. Maybe it's because the foil base was more of a repellent for this mixture. I don't know. Can you even call these crystals? It looks like I put Space Godzilla in the freezer for a couple of hours. And here's the end product, Space Godzilla with a little tutu of frost. He looks like he's auditioning to be a ballerina in Frozen 3. The crystals are pretty secure onto the figure too, I mean sure some of it flakes off, but some of it's on here really hard. Look at this, it looks like I just made a purchase from Walter White. So here's the Space Godzilla toy now with most of the crystals off of him, and he's in pretty okay shape, although there is some paint damage, uh, probably from the boiling water. But I did get this beautiful crystal display out of the deal, and I am going to hold on to this. So in conclusion, if you want to grow some crystals, go get the Nat Geo box, and I guess this video just went way on a tangent, huh? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.